All right, fam, before I begin, I want to give you guys a homework assignment, and I'm going to um, I'm going to quiz you on it at the end of the day, but it's to go over to Wikipedia and look up camera lens, and I want you guys to uh, read as much as you can stomach to try to get um, a deeper understanding than what I'm going to give you. But the information that I'm going to give you today is going to be enough information for you to have enough knowledge to get you up and going, up and running. And basically, you're not going to want to care about anything that's irrelevant. You only want to care, well, what's relevant to you? Um, what is it that I need to know right now that will get me started right now so I can go out and start shooting right now without, you know, educating myself and burning my brain and, you know, going through this, that, and the other? Well, let me say this, fam. For us, for video producers, hip-hop producers, anybody that's in the field, anybody that's in the game, anybody that's doing music videos or movies, this and the other, we're looking for a specific set of lenses. We're looking for a specific type, a specific kind, and there's a reason why. Um, and once we get more advanced, then we move uh, to other types of cameras. Now, there's two. Well, actually, there's a lot of different type of cameras, fam. Uh, actually, I wrote it down. There are, where are we right here? There are prime lenses, fixed lenses, zoom lenses, wide angle lenses, um, telephoto lenses, and specialty lenses. Now, we're not going to get into all of the detail about all what all the lenses do. Um, but what I, what I can say, uh, we'll get into it later on as we, you know, start shooting and editing things like that. But what I will say is the type of lenses that you want to buy with your camera right now, right now, would be three different type of lenses. You would want to look for, and I'll, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you what, and then I'll tell you why. You're going to want to get invest in, uh, if you only got a budget for one, for one lens, I would probably suggest that you either get a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter. Probably a 50 millimeter, especially if you're working on a budget. Now they got a 50 millimeter called, they call it the pocket, the rocket, the power something. I forget what it's called, but it's only 99 bucks. Find it on eBay. It's a 50 millimeter and it's a 50 millimeter 1.8. Now I'll talk to you guys about these numbers uh, soon enough, but let me finish uh, with this first. Um, so these two would be the first choice. If you could only, if you say, but well, only got enough money to buy one camera, I would recommend that you either get a 35 or a 50. I'll explain to you why in a second, um, but let's talk about some other things real quick. But, but if you can get a kit, if you can afford a kit, you would want to get a 28 millimeter. You'll want to get a 50. I'm going to put this in red right now or I'll gray it out. I'm going to gray it a little bit so we know. And we, that's, that's optional. It's either 35 or 50. But if you get a 28, I wouldn't get a 35 because the 28 number is too close to 35. You can just, you know, to get that range, you can step up or back up. You see, so if you're going from 28, you will want to jump up to a 50. Or, yeah, you want to jump up to a 50. And then from that, you'll want to um, jump up. Excuse me, fam. You want to jump up to a... Uh, let me get this together, fam. Sorry. I just want you guys to see numbers because I want you, your eyes to be familiar with these numbers. You'll jump up to, up to either a 70 or an 80, preferably an 80 millimeter. Um, and then eventually you'll want to get you either a 200 or a 210. Now, these are considered fixed fixed lens all right these are considered fixed lens now fixed lens is have a fixed f-stop now I know none of this means nothing to you right now but let me say this real quick if you get the two I mean if you get the 28 millimeter you always want to look to get a 1.8 that's a thing for us film makers that's for us filmmakers that's for us producers now, I'll explain to you why so that you can understand, you know, fully in a moment. But for now, let's just keep it like that. 
If you get a 35 millimeter, try to get you a 1.4 or a 1.8. Same thing with the 50 millimeter. Try to get you a 1.4, um, 1.4 or 1.8. Same thing with the 70, um, 1.8. And same with the 200. Okay, now as far as the 200, you probably ain't gonna get you no 1.8. It's probably gonna be 2.2.8. Uh, but we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Just be a little bit more patient with me. Stop arguing all the time. All right, now let me explain to you why you want to get these. The reason why you want to get these is because you got this DSLR camera, and Say, for example, if you got this 28 millimeter, you standing way back here, your subject is up there. If you only got one lens and it's not a zoom lens, because right now they sell zoom lenses, but see, keep in mind this, fam. I'm trying to save y'all some money, but they do have lenses like, uh, what's, what's that? They got 20 to 200 and, you know, 7, 17 to 250. You know, they got all of them weird, weird ones. Uh, what is it? 70 to 200 or 7,300. Something like that. I Actually, I got to look it up. But they're very expensive. They're very expensive lenses. So we're not talking about that right now. But we will come back to it. And I will explain to you what's the benefits of it, the zoom lens. But for now, actually, you can see what the benefits of it is now. If 28 millimeter to 200, I'll show you. 28 millimeter lens means that you're standing way back here and your subject is right here. Say if, say if your subject is there, right there, right? If your subject is there, and you can stand way back here and you can get a full wide shot, right? Now, what if you wanted the close up? Well, you have to. You should. You have to run up 50 millimeters. I don't th think it's exactly 50 millimeters. I don't know my math, but you guys get the idea. You have to run from back here. Be like, hold on, let, wait a minute. Let me get this next shot. You run from back there. You move up there, and now you got you a 50 millimeter shot. Then you want a 70 millimeter shot. So you take a couple of steps closer. Now you closer. You got a 70 millimeter shot. And if you want a 200 millimeter shot, then you step up way close, and now you got a 200, you know, and that's all from the 28. I, ho I hope I'm explaining this where you guys can understand, because I'm kind of losing myself. So do y'all guys see what I'm saying? So the type of lens you want to buy, you want to, you, 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 this is what you want to have in your tool kit. You, you don't want to do all of that running back and forth, this, that, and the other, because you have your camera set at a certain way, and you kind of just, you got the, all your rig back there. You'll be like, okay, let me get this um, close-up shot. I mean, let me get the wide angle. Let me get the medium shot. Okay, let me get the close-up, and you're moving all over the place. Well, what these lenses allow you to do is stand at the same spot. Say you got this 28 millimeter. You put the 28 millimeter lens on the camera. And let me pause this real quick so I can pull up the 28 millimeter lens. All right, fam. I went and stole some images off the internet so I can have some images with some of the stuff I'm talking about. All right. So anyway, um, let me get back to this here. Uh, we have the 28 millimeter lens. We have the 50. And I remember now what it's called. It's called the Nifty 50, what they call it. This is a real cheap lens. Um, I had this, but I had upgraded to you know a good, a better quality lens. But this shoots uh, extremely, very good, good footage. Anyway, here, uh, here's a seventy. This is actually, actually, I think this is a um, twenty-four to seventy. This is a twenty-four to seventy. Um, and then we have the two ten. And I'm just showing you basically, you know, three to four lenses. You know, I got a twenty-eight. I have a 50 and I have an 80. I need a 200, but I shoot everything that I need. I primarily use those. I have a, a, a wide fish fish angle because there was a I pitched that look to um, John Gooden. You know, you might have already saw John Gooden video. I pitched that look to him, and I pretty much had him buy the wide angle because that's a specialty lens. That's considered a specialty. It's a fish eye lens. Anyway, it make everything bubble when you, you know, when you put into it. But anyway, um, these here, fam, fixed lens is where it's fixed at the f-stop of 1.8 or 1.4 or 1.2. 
Now, let me help you to understand what this is. The lower the f-stop, the more light gets put into the camera. So you can shoot in lower light situations. Now, I just had a discussion with one of my uh, assistants and partners, and he was asking me how could he, you know, shoot better in, under natural lighting. Um, you know, he want to shoot in clubs and, you know, he do the night scene, but, you know, he don't want to, you know, um, be bringing all the lights in the club. It looks stupid, right? So I told him, well, try to get a lens. See, you can kind of look, you can almost kind of equate certain lens to near field monitors or headphones. Like uh, if you can bring out the big lights, which is equivalent to the monitor speakers, then you can use a, um, a camera lens that don't have such a low of an f-stop. But there's a trade-off. You have to bring all that lighting. Now, the lower the f-stop, guess what, y'all? The more expensive the lens is. Ha-ha! <laughs> but it's a trade-off because guess what? You don't need a lot of light. You see what I'm saying? So when you're trying to, and the lower the f-stop, the better, the more light you allow in, into your camera. And the more light you allow into your camera, the better color saturation you're going to get, the better image quality you're going to get. And that's the reason why, that's the difference what professional people know as opposed to amateurs. Amateurs have no idea what these numbers mean, and they could care less. Amateurs don't care about these numbers. It means nothing to them. You know, all they, all they know, I got the camera, I'm good to go. But what they fail to realize is that without these numbers here, then you can't shoot as good a quality of a uh, you know video as you could if you had you know lower lighting. Sorry about that, y'all. I got a little distracted. So anyway, um, so the lowest that you can get, or that you should get, or that I would recommend you get is the 2.8 now let me help you to understand something else too about these uh lower f stops fam the lower the f stop the more depth of field you get as well and us being video uh fanatics beat maker fanatics and this that, and the other that's what we want that is actually what we're looking for when we shoot in our videos now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put this on pause and i'm gonna pull up a few images that display that to help you understand why we're so fascinated with that look but i also want to warn you be careful because that's not the only thing that makes a video look good but it's 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 uh it's like an illusion. It's like something that the common eye is used to seeing. So if the common eye is used to seeing that depth of field, that's one indication that somebody is using some really good expensive lenses, okay? But it's all not about that all by itself. But what I will do so that you can fully understand, I'm going to pull up some images and I'm going to tell you, um, or should I say, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about so that you can have a little bit more understanding of what I'm talking about with the lens. And I believe it's better to show you than to tell you. Give me one second. Okay, let's resume. Now, the lens that they use here was probably, looking at the angle and things like that, this probably was a 35 or 28. This probably was a 35. All right? Um, the f-stop, I'm not sure, but we're not going to talk about the f-stop right now on the, that image. But we'll talk about the f-stop image on here. Now, the the lens they may have used right here may have been. Let me let me cover this. May have been, and I want you to be able to look at images and be able to discern what camera they may have used as well. I want you to be able to do the same thing. They might have used the 50 right here. They might have used the 50. But let's let's push on now right here it's obvious that they had to use either an 80 or something higher so either 80 or something higher than an 80 why do you say that t how do you know okay if you got a 28 millimeter lens or 50 how close would you have to stand to this guy to get this this much footage inside the camera 
You see I'm coming from? So that's the benefits of having like a 200 or 80 um, because you can stand at the same distance. See how far he's standing away? And you see how much area he got? But then you put on the 50 millimeter and he's a little closer. Then you put on the 70 and it's a little closer. Well, that, that same concept applies with this. You know, he's at a distance. He got to be at a distance, but, you know, he's able to get a close-up. So that's where the benefits of these um, lenses, these fixed, these prime lenses come in at, all right? Now, the other thing is, notice how this is crispy, got detail in it, but it, start gets, it starts to get a little blurry right there, and even more blurry on his shoulder, and even more blurry right there, and even more blurry back there. Well, all that comes from having a, ca a lens with a lower f-stop. So say it. Good depth of field, right here, good depth of field, come from a lens that have a lower f-stop. Now, of course, you work with different apertures and things like that, but that's where compensation for lighting come in at and that's just a whole that's a whole totally different tutorial and a whole totally different ball game but what i'm trying to do what i'm trying to help you appreciate and trying to help you to understand is when you get your t2i or your t3i or your t4 or your 7d then i want you to understand the type of lens that you want to be interested in these are the type of lens that you're going to be in the market for because these are the type of lens that's going to give us the type of look that we're looking for all right, so let's move on to another picture that had to be probably a maybe a 50 millimeter close up or 80. Um, you see the detail, but you see how it falls off down there where it gets a little blurry, blurry on this side, blurry, blurry before the camera. Then she's sharp and then blurry after. So she's like in a, a, a range, a field range. Um, we'll talk about that. We'll get more into detail about that, but it goes back to doing the homework assignment. That I want you guys to do, and that's look up camera lenses on Wikipedia and read it. And you may understand it. Oh, well, sorry, y'all. Oh, no, you're never you're in life supposed to uh, yarn. <laughs> you're never supposed to yarn during no tutorials, man. But anyway, fam, I uh, just wanted to show y'all this. Um, this probably was a, this looked like a wider angle. So this, by being kind of this close, it was either a 28 or a 35 millimeter, probably at a 1.8. The more blurry it is, y'all, the more sharper the image is and, and immediately start getting blur, that means that this number is getting lower and lower. That means uh, 1.4 or 1.2. Um, this, this right here, if we see this, we notice that. Now, look, this, made, this is a macro shot. This uh, probably was a 80 millimeter or, I don't know, maybe even a 200. No, no. Nah. I would say a probably a 70 to 80 millimeter with a very, very low f-stop. Um, I'm not a guru, you know, photography expert, but um, you'll see how this is blurry before the butterfly. Um, the butterfly is in, in focus. The flower is in focus. The stem is in focus, but everything else is out of focus. So this may have been a 1.4 or a 1.8. But the idea, fam, is to understand that what type of lens should I buy to you? What type of lens should I buy? Now, I will say this. Some people be like, ain't there one lens out there that cover all of the ranges? Yes, there is. There's a, there's a lens out there that covers from the bottom all the way up to the top. I haven't seen none personally that it's 1.8. Maybe it's just so out of my price range, I can't even find it. But they do have ones that's 2.8. Now, for the zooms, that's usually the lower you can get is a 2.8. I haven't seen anything uh, lower than that, but that is sufficient. The benefits of having one with the zoom is the fact that you can stand there. You don't have to change lenses, and all of your images is going to be equal. Now, sometimes when you change these lenses, if, if the f-stop changed, then you may have to adjust it a little bit um you know to compensate uh but we'll talk about that we'll get into detail on you know the color and you know adjusting the aperture and adjusting the iso and all of that but that is the benefits but i think those lenses the type of lens that ranges from that low of a number all the way up to that high of a number that keep in mind that you are swapping out four lenses for one 
So that one lens is going to cost you over fifteen hundred dollars, maybe eighteen. I think twenty. Somebody said they paid twenty four, twenty two hundred. That might be eighteen hundred now. They're very expensive. So that's the reason why I recommend you to get the single, the prime, or the fixed lenses, and build up from there. Um, majority of people they just use the fixed lenses and keep it moving. Especially if you got two cameras, like you get two T two eyes, then you got two lenses, then you can shoot one image at twenty eight, and you can have the same camera sitting right next to it shooting it at a seventy millimeter. So you can get a wide shot of a rapper, and then you get a close up shot all at, all in one take, and they don't have to do it twice. And that's good. It's good to cut between those two um images anyway we'll talk about that later too but that's just a you know a big quick uh you know rundown on that so um these are good these are good you know it's everything ain't in perfect focus her arm is in focus that's just what happens that's what give it that film look you know what i'm saying you see they they hear the foreground is blurry but they um they crispy um but this it's not as blurry. So by it not being as blurry, it's probably a 2.8. Uh, keep in mind, too, now the stock lenses that come, those numbers are higher. Uh, when, you, when you buy a lens, um, let me pull this up here. Let me do this. When you buy a lens, and let's see if we can zoom into some of this here. Um... Or you see here, there's a 70 to 200. Now you see that that's a one, that's a 2.8. I don't know, we can't zoom no higher than that. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a 2.8. But now here's another one. This is 100 to 400. But you notice here it's a 4.5 to 5.6. So if you did a, a search on, well, how does that image look? Just so that you can understand what you're looking at. If you look at, a, what was that? That was a... 100 to 400 millimeter was it y'all and that's a 4.5 to 100 and that's obviously that now look at that sixteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars that's bananas b all right so let's see if they got an image mm. this is cool so 100 to 400. Okay, we, we can look at this. Now, you may notice that it's, it's blurry, but it's not like, like real blurry. You know what I'm saying? It's not real blurry. And the front is not that blurry. You see, we don't know what distance they got. We don't know what the aperture settings are. But that's the difference between a fixed lens. See, this is considered not a fixed lens. If you guys can look up here real quick. This is not considered fixed. This is a zoom, and these numbers is adjustable. So that means that at a 4.5, are y'all still with me? Because I'm starting to lose myself. Um, if you zoom out to 100, like if you zoom all the way back to 100, your image is going to be have a 4.5 range or depth of field. And again, to get that look, you want the lower f-stop so that you can have that blurry. You understand what I'm saying? You get what I'm talking about? If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to run some tests. I'm going to find out what you know so I can break it down for y'all a little, a little bit better. Some of y'all going to get it. Some of y'all is not because it took me, a, it took me a, you know, I'm going to be honest, it took me a little minute to really, truly grasp it. But once you grasp it, once you know what the heck I'm talking about, your game is going to change 1,000%. You're going to know what type of lens you need. You're going to know why you need it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be on your shoot. You're going to be like, oh, man, I'm going to need a 28. Give me a 28. Hand me a 28. Then you're going to be like, oh, man, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, shoot, man, I'm too far away. But I want to get a close-up. I can't get no closer. Hey, give me an 80. Give me an 80. See, that's what you're going to be doing. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be way far. You're going to be at a concert, and, you know, your person going to be on stage, but you want to be able to get the audience and a close-up of the, the, the person, too. So you got to stand way behind the audience, but you got a 28. You know what I'm saying? You got a 28. You way at the back of the audience. Yeah, you getting everybody's heads, but your subject is looking real tiny. 
You know what I'm saying? The person on stage you're trying to record looking real tiny. So that's where you're going to get that. You're going to be like, give me that zoom. Give me that 200 zoom. Give me that 300 zoom. Give me that 400 zoom. Then you're going to stand behind the crowd. You're going to zoom all the way in on them. Then the crowd head is going to get blurry and he's going to be crispy. And that's, that's the type of things you're going to be doing. But that's how important it is to know and understand what lenses are. So with that little bit of information that I gave you, and I know it took me 25 minutes to, to run it down to you, and I'm going to get more deeper into detail, but that little information should, get, should give you enough knowledge on the type of lenses that you want to be in the market of buying, the, the, the difference with the, folk, um, you know, the uh, zoom and, um, and the fixed lenses. We're going to come on our next tutorial, and we're going to talk about the best type of lenses to buy to purchase for the best quality video and I'm going to show you some images and show you the difference of the characteristics but um and then we're going to move on to some then we're going to start getting to some fun but I but I got to I had to get the hardware stuff out the way so that y'all really can understand what's going on you see what I'm saying um then we're going to do some um situations we're going to do some situations where I'm going to be shooting in natural lighting then we're going to do some situations where I'm going to be shooting using um, you know, softbox like softbox lighting and bounce lighting and things like that. So we're gonna get it all in, fam, and we're gonna get it. I'm gonna try to get it all in in the next two weeks, which you know, which all for this, and then then we go to the fun of editing, shooting, doing special effects, and all that other type of stuff. So with that, please, please, I beseech you to go over to Wikipedia Camera Lens and just read it. Even if you don't understand it, just read it so that you can familiarize yourself with the terms and some of the lingo because we're going to be referring to that. Because again, again, going back to being a good quality cinematographer, a professional videographer, you want to know about your lenses and you want to know about the cameras and the other thing we're going to learn when we come back after we're done talking about the lenses, we're going to talk about the functions and the settings, how you're going to have your camera so that you, when you start shooting, you can put a beautiful image, you can record a beautiful image into your camera. All right. So until the next time, I'll see you guys in a minute. I'll see you when I spin it. I'm going to send you all those tests. Everybody that's a member is required to take the test. And um, the, the test is going to email me the results. I'm going to go over the results. I'm going to find out who was paying attention, who wasn't, and see what I, you know, see how I can uh, help you more. And make sure you leave comments so that, you, you know, if you have any questions or things like that, you can uh, run it by me. All right? So it's your homeboy, Grant Tizzle. And until the next time, which is um, should be a day or so, I'm going to be releasing the second um, sessions of these modules. All right? So, take all this information, put it in your brain pack, put it in your backpack, get it in, learn it, take your iPhone, go take you some video, because we're going to be using some crazy footage to do some crazy and some fun things, all right? Oh, man, wait till y'all hear this track I got for y'all. It is bananas. Y'all going to love it and benefit from it. All right, so let me go ahead and get out of here, because I've been doing this long enough. All right, see you in a minute. I'll see you when I spin it.